The Navajo Birth Cohort Study would like to share the stories from Journey Women, a Native Guide to Wellness, Volumes 1 and 2, edited by a collective of over 40 Native women. A special thanks to Sharon Ishkomer Fleming of the Choctaw Nation, the visionary for the book. The stories being told in Journey Women tell us that women's health is in your hands. The community health and environmental research staff embrace these writings from the Native women of the Northwest Coast and Native women across the country who share their journey to wellness through their stories. Ina Nijona, A Beautiful Life. Listen for our Native Women's Health Minute radio series on Navajo Broadcast Services, 91.7 KJLP FM radio from Gallup, New Mexico, and other local radio stations. Native Women's Health Minute is sponsored by the Navajo Birth Cohort Study. Imagine a woman who believes it is right and good. Imagine a woman who honors her experiences and tells her stories, who believes she is good. Imagine a woman who trusts and respects herself. Imagine a woman who listens to her needs and desires and she meets them with tenderness and grace. Imagine a woman who acknowledges the past influences on the present, who has walked through her past, who has healed into the present. Imagine a woman who refuses to surrender except to her truest self and to her wisest voice. Imagine a woman who names her own gods, imagines that divine in her own image, weaves her own spirituality, and allows it to inform her daily life. Imagine a woman in love with her own body and celebrates the rhythm of her body. Imagine a woman who celebrates her years and her wisdom. A woman who is reminded of the truth about herself when she forgets. Imagine yourself as this woman. Inan Jona, A Beautiful Life. If you plan on becoming a mom, let the Navajo Birth Cohort Study work with you in giving birth to a strong, healthy baby. The study is currently recruiting moms-to-be between the ages of 14 and 45 years old to participate and learn about good nutrition during baby's first year of birth and development. The goal is to recruit over 1,500 moms-to-be who have lived on the Navajo Nation for at least five years or more. For those interested in becoming participants in this landmark study, please contact a cohort clinical liaison for more information. Call toll-free 1-877-545-6775. Please visit HealthyVoices.org or like us on Facebook. We're going to be doing, we've been doing this since um, 2013, and we have 80 people from this area that have signed up. We're going to let the community know about our data. On July 19th, here at the Chapter House, we're going to have a big community event to let people know what we're finding with our data and what is happening, what the environment results are here. So that, that's going to be July 19th, and we're going to have a walk to this. So, the way we're going to do this study then is the first thing we're going to do is try and figure out how these exposures happen. Are they happening because people are drinking water that's contaminated? We also had a study that a woman named Laura Shields, any of you know Laura? She was up at Shiprock Hospital in the um, 80s and 90s. Um, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and she published a study showing a relationship to birth defects in women who lived near mines when they were pregnant. And you would think that something like that would have been huge news, and that it would have been followed up in many different ways. It was never followed up. It was always criticized because some of those women worked in an electronics plant, and that had not been controlled for in the study. What we see is no matter where we look on Navajo, there are some regional differences, but the two things we see most often are arsenic and uranium. And arsenic is between 15 and 20 percent of the unregulated wells that people drink from, the livestock wells. So that's 15 to 20 percent of those have high arsenic, higher than what um, the regulated systems have to comply with based on health effects. About 8 to 10 percent of the wells have uranium that's at a higher level than is safe to drink. 
at, by today's standards. And in many cases, both of those contaminants are in the same well. So we get a range of other contaminants that we see, but really it's those two. The biggest problem, though, that we find is about 80% of those wells, somewhere around 75 to 80% of those wells, also have bacterial contamination. And we don't know how all of that interacts either. And about 20% of them have E. coli, um, and that's a huge concern as well. Think in your head what you thought when I asked you what service unit would have the most elevations in uranium. Well, now when we look at this graph, we see that the 50th percentile is down here, and the 95th percentile is up here, and we have all of these dots, so all of these Navajo samples from our study have urine uranium, there's urine, there's uranium in urine that exceeds the 95th percentile of the enhanced values for the United States, and it's in every single service unit. It's not just in Shiprock, which we might expect because of the mines there. It's, we do have these elevations in Chinle, and we do have them, so we do have them across all service units. What's very striking is that 69, over 69% 69 of these samples have levels above the 50th percent. So it's almost, so it's much more than we would expect. And bump and 14% of samples exceeded the 95th percentile. So instead of being of 5% of the Navajo birth core population exceeding the 95th percentile, 14%. And these results, we did a presentation in Chinle last. May, and these results are similar, because I was wondering now that we have so much more data whether it's going to change or not, but these trends seem to continue as we get more results. And then the question is, well, are these levels high in moms, are they high in dads, are they high in babies? And remember that question, does uranium transfer from the mother to the placenta? Unfortunately, we are seeing that we think that, that, that it does. Um, we were hoping that it didn't and that we would see lo very low or no detectable levels in baby, but unfortunately we see elevated uranium in mom, we see it in dad, and we see it in baby even right after birth. So when this urine sample is, connect is collected um, within even a day of birth, it's elevated, and then we still see it in the, the few two to six month samples that we have. We don't know exactly where the where, where the metals are coming from, but we do know places where it can come from, like the stoves, like the jewelry making. So at least, um, you know, like as a single, as, as a single family, or even as a group of families, or even, even as a service unit, you may not necessarily be able to take 18 inches of soil away or cap a mill tailings pile, but you can make, you can, um, choose not to let your child um, crawl around a stove, which might increase their exposure. So it's, it's two sides of that. There's getting rid of the exposures on a kind of restoration. How do we restore the land from that aspect? But then also, how can we, as, as, as healthy individuals and healthy, healthy community members and healthy parents, make decisions that will positively, or and at least definitely not negatively impact our health?